Hi, this is the advisor with Stacey Chalemi, founder of the Complete Herbal Guide. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest with us. It's Diane Grizel. And she's going to tell you a little about herself and what she does because she has a lot to tell you and I want her to begin. So Diane, take it away. Well, thanks for having me, Stacey. Well, I've been in the public relations business for over, over 30 years. But about five years ago, I also changed things up a bit when Wilhelmina tapped me to be a silver-haired model when they were bringing back the older women on the board. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and that got me blogging. So I also blog as Silver Disobedience, which is one of the top blogs in the world of the 50 and older community, according to a bunch of publications, not my opinion, although I think it is, but uh, it's nice to get the external validation there. Yes, definitely. <laughs> and uh, I'm a writer. Now, tell me a little bit about your blog. So Silver Disobedience, what is that all about? Well, it started off as a play on words because I went totally silver right after September 11th and I colored my hair for the next few years and um, finally decided to let it go silver. So that was the silver part. And the disobedient yeah. part was really about respectfully communicating that every age is relevant. You yes. know, a lot of people think I'm, you know, just rah, rah for the older 50 crowd, but that's really not where I'm coming from. I come yes. from the space of that. We can learn from anyone at any age. You oh, know, definitely. if you sit and watch, yeah. You know, if you sit and watch a bunch of, two-year-olds play, you're going to learn a lot from watching them. Yes. If you spoke to a teenager, you'll learn a lot. Yes. And if you spoke to someone who was 50, 60, 80, you'll learn a lot. So it's respect for every age. Oh, definitely. I, you know, I think we could learn a lot from our younger generation as much as we can learn from our older generation. It's being open-minded and really understanding where they, they come from. You know, I've learned a lot from my kids who, you know, are either in college or just graduated college. I've learned a lot from young children too. And just looking at their perspective in life, I think every, every era of life has something special to offer because we all come from different genu genu uh, generations and we kind of look at life from a different perspective and you know and especially you know uh the younger generation they see things totally different than how we grew up but we actually could you know i have learned from you know the way they think you know and i think it's a great you know idea to really look at every generation not think that okay i'm this age and i know it all because i've been here x amount of years but you know what there, we only use 10 percent of our brain and we're open to learning forever. You know, there's always something to learn out there. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, then I, I take the blog and next to the next level with that premise in that I really believe in personal responsibility mm -hmm. and that we're in charge of our perspectives, our yes. lives and how they're unfolding, which I think aligns a lot with a lot of your message there, Stacey. Yeah. And, um, I always say, you know, before you get angry at someone else, before you point a finger at someone else, take some time and think about how difficult it is for you yourself, you, yes, change the exact same behavior you're upset with someone else about. You know, so if you're looking at someone and saying anything, you know, why don't they work out? Think about how hard it is to get motivated to work out. Right. You know, you know, yeah. It's not, it doesn't come naturally. It's something we have to train ourselves to do. We train ourselves in many ways to be excellent yes. as you call people on. You know, it's it, life is is a, an ongoing experience, and you know, there's so much to learn in life. And even the older generation, you you learn from their stories and their perspectives too. So it's you know, it's 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 wonderful to be able to be open minded because so many people too they play the victim. You know, they are like, oh, you know, I you know, they don't know how to retrain their brain. They they make excuses for themselves, and they don't think. You know, they're like, oh, I can't change. I can't do this I can't do that you know poor me but you know what if you really want to change if you really want to open your mind to various things in the world and and look at life and learn life from so-called out of the box 
you are capable. It's how we train our brain that is, you know, the key to all things. Don't you think? I I agree with you a hundred percent. You know, I do think there, you know, I always like to say it's an, I shouldn't say I agree with you 100%. I agree with you 99.9. Okay. I always wait to leave the margin where, you know, maybe something's chemically gone awry with someone, you know, there right. are factors. Yes. But for the most part, for the majority of people, if we really take a good look at ourselves and say, how are we sabotaging ourselves? Yes. You know, how can we look at something differently? How can we bring it back? to ourselves yes and be really thoughtful you know before we whip it off and you know i tell people all the time especially with social media you can actually swipe away and you'll be fine yeah you don't have to you know react respond it's a great exam a great way to learn self-control yeah <laughs> definitely it definitely is you know I, you know, I think sometimes people open their mouths too much and that's the problem. You know, sometimes you have to really take a step back and look at the other person and think about their, you know, what, you know, how, you know, how would you react if you actually walk through that person's shoes? Because you're saying, oh, well, you shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. I think this, I think that, you know, you should, you know, and you're telling the person what to do, but then you're not looking at it from that person's perspective. You know, everybody's, you know, has a, had a different life, a, a different childhood, a different upbringing, and we're all going to, we're all different people and we're going to view life differently. So we should always respect other people's opinions because, you know, it matters, you know, and it may not agree with yours, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. You know, that, that is such a good point. You know, I think it's really, well, you know, opinions are such an interesting thing. First of all, we all have them. Yes. Second of all, you know, there are times we recruit them from other people. And I think often when we are in opinion mode, we've already made the decision. We're kind of just looking for validation. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and then there are the opinions we receive from other people that we weren't asking for. Yes. And you know, can get our ire up. And on those, I always say, you know, think about if, if an opinion from someone upsets you on some level. I think on some level you agree with it. Yeah. And you just resent that someone pointed it out to you or made it public. Yes. So it's worth considering that and giving it some careful contemplation. Right. You know, maybe the person's opinion did you, you know, because if, if you don't like it, it wouldn't bother you if you just totally disagreed. Right. Just, exactly. Yeah, interesting perspective, you know, not what I think, but. Otherwise, there's something we agree with. I agree with you. And I, I think, you know, sometimes it's like people fear the truth, you know, because once you're faced with the truth and it's something that you don't, you know, you might have to change it. And people fear change, you know, change is very hard for a lot of people, you know, and it, yeah, they, cause they, they don't know the unknown or the unexpected. Well, if I change, is that going to make me a different person? Who's that person going to be? You know, will I like that person? You know, you know, will and the fear of failure, you know. So there's a lot going on when people, you know, are are faced with the truth, you know, and and that's why some people react so negatively when they are faced with the truth. Very spot on, Stacy. You really you really can't put it back in a box once it's been exposed. Yes. addressing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very true. You know, but we're people are endlessly fascinating in these ways. Yes. And you know, it's one of the things I love about the daily conversation we have because it's such a self-reflective group that has built. Yes. Up and you know, it's funny because we never address politics, we never address current events. Um we don't address any of the trending hashtags ever. Right. We just look at how can we be the best person? So if we're in a situation where that topic comes up. Right. And we never mentioned the topic, you know, <laughs> you know, we just say, how can we address it best as possible? Right. You know, how can we think, how can we maybe ask the other person, what are you thinking about this? Yeah. To learn more. Right. And sometimes you do have to ask 
the person and let them answer it. Even though you may know the answer, let them dig deep and try to figure it out themselves. That way they're not so aggressively negative and, and they don't, they're not going to shun you away. Let them, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes you have to really look inside yourself and really think about what's in there, you know, connect with your, your mind, body, and soul. Cause the answer is always within ourselves. We know the answers, if, but we have to connect with ourselves and, you know, and our, our, ourselves will give us the answer. Our, our intuition, our heart, all that together will give us the answers. You know, I, I really, I think you're so spot on with that way of thinking. And it's funny when you talk about intuition and you talked about fear and fear of failure. And, um, you know, one of my favorite books was actually a book by, by Gavin De Becker. Mm -hmm. And it was called The Gift of Fear. Have you ever read it? No, I haven't. It, and, you know, he, you know, I walk, was walking around the city the other day, and this is a little into a different topic of fear. Yeah. But, Someone had graffitied all over the sidewalks, you know, mm -hmm. you know, don't fear anything. Right. And I thought, what a silly comment that, you know, mm -hmm. that's really bad advice. Yeah. You know, yeah. you should fear things. Your instincts do give you lots of good information. Yes. Yes. You know, in his book, he talked about, you know, somebody walking to an elevator mm -hmm. and, you know, the elevator opens. And in that split second, you think you see someone and you think, Maybe I shouldn't get in this elevator. Yes. But you you rationalize and sell yourself out instead yes. and you get in the elevator mm -hmm. instead of just like letting the door close and acting as if you forgot something and you have to go back and get it. Right. So, you know, fear is such a fascinating topic to explore because sometimes it's super handy yes. and can save you from dangerous situations. Exactly. And then other times it's because we're twisting up and bringing in tons of past info that is irrelevant to the situation. Right. You know, I always tell people the past of the past, we cannot change the past. We need to focus on the present because so many people live in the past and then they get stuck in the past and they can't go into the present and they can't move forward because they're so stuck in the past. You know, that I, I write, I, I'm a hypnotherapist by training. I love it. I love yeah. hypnotherapy. I, it's been very helpful to me. Mm -hmm. And I used to do it when I was in private practice with other people, you know, 20 years ago, right. 20, almost 30 years ago. Geez, time goes by. <laughs> <laughs> Friends who say, can you help me quit smoking? You know, can you help me? <laughs> right. I'm too much coffee, you know, or things like that. But it's interesting. And when I write in the blog, sometimes I say, listen, we, we slip into these trances. Mm -hmm. and we don't even realize we're doing it. You know, we're, right. we're reacting situations instead of like looking at that person and saying, how could Stacy, let's say you said something, how could Stacy upset me? I only just met her. You know, right. we're just a delightful conversation. Yeah. She could possibly be going for my jugular or, you know, whatever. It's just, yeah. what be Stacy? But right. something else is triggered and bringing someone into that state. Yes. Yeah. And it's crazy because sometimes, you know, I've been in those situations. It's like if someone like draws back all of a sudden and it's like, what did I say? What did I do? I didn't do anything. I can't understand. You know, the person's not talking to me either. You know, I don't get it, you know. And sometimes you just you could raggle your mind a thousand times, you'll never find the answer. You know, it's within that person. Something triggered something, or maybe their own um, insecurities, you know, maybe they saw something in that person, you know, or, you know, or jealousy, you know, you don't know, you'll never know unless you ask the person, of course, you know, but it's like, you can't really, it, you can't make yourself crazy over analyzing things, you know, if it's not meant to be, I say it's not meant to be. Well, I wholeheartedly agree. And you said something really important, unless you ask the person, right? So much in communication. Um, I find that people ask a zillion other people, well, what do you think about this that he or she did? And my answer is always, well, why don't you ask them? Yeah. You know, you, you could like invent all kinds of dramas here. You could write Hollywood scripts. You could yes. even that next bestseller 
thriller, you know, but yeah, you get the real answer if you ask the person right that potential issues with. Yeah. People like well, it amazes me the circuitous routes that people will take to avoid. It's there's like this fear of confrontation, and it's not even a confrontation, it's just yeah. plain asking a question. Right. You know, what did you mean by that? And if you say it with a smile, yeah. I mean, sometimes someone's like, I didn't mean anything, and they'll clarify it because yeah. either the listener could have slipped into a trance. Right. Speaker. Right. Exactly. Very true. Now, with your career, how long have you been doing hypnotherapy? I started doing hypnotherapy back in the 90, 91 or 92. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so you've been doing it a while. A long time. And I've done it with myself every day. You know, maybe missed a couple of days over the years. I just, it's a very, I, I equate it to flying and okay. taking off. I feel like I move up and out. I, I truly feel like when I hit that relaxed state, I have yes. lifted up and I'm weightless. And I just love that feeling. <laughs> yeah. Now explain to people what hypnotherapy is because not everybody might understand it fully. You know, so they might understand little bits and pieces or they think they understand it, but they don't know the true equation of what it really is. Well, first off, when, you know, everyone thinks, oh, I, someone's being hypnotized because we've seen the movies, you yes, know, yes, 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 mm-hmm. get out, did more horrible things <laughs> than we could have ever wanted. You know, nobody gets hypnotized unless they want to, number right. one. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a choice yes. to relax yes. and allow yourself to be open to listening yes. to constructive words that will help you that you want in something you want to be helped with. That's the best way you can understand it. Right. And if you were sitting in a room and someone said, okay, Stacy, you're very relaxed now. They got you super relaxed. And they said, and what's your bank account number? <laughs> you immediately sit up and say, what did you just say? You might not know that I said your bank account number, but something would startle you because yes. you're always in self-protective mode. It's very similar to you can get in a car and you and we've all gotten on a highway someplace. Right. And we've listened to songs. We thought about the conversation we just had. We thought about the one we're going to have. And all of a sudden we arrive at our destination. It's like, wow. If someone said, well, how many cars did you pass on the road? You know, did you pass any trucks? You know, were there trucks on the road? Yeah. You wouldn't even know because you were in a state of trance. Right. Your subconscious took over. You got there safely. But if all of a sudden you had to break, you'd be right out of it. Right. So it's the same kind of thing. It's just a state of relaxation where you're very receptive to um, something that needs to be done. And it's, you know... I also equate it to a form of meditation Mm -hmm. and say to people, you know, can you imagine if you had the job of sorting the mail, you've just arrived at work, you're hired by the Empire State Building to sort mail for all those floors. Yes. And you'd say, oh my gosh, how am I going to get this done? (laughs) But if you stopped and let yourself meditate or hypnotize yourself for five minutes, Right. You would most likely have that job done in record time because your brain would help you work on the answers of how you were going to get it done. That's amazing. And you know, when I thought of hypnotherapy, I always thought that you had to do it with someone else instructing you. And you said that you do hypnotherapy on yourself. So how does one person do it if they're in their home and they want to do maybe an, a hypnotherapy uh, exercise with themselves, just by themselves, how would they go about doing that? Okay, well, there are all kinds of great meditations you can log into online. Okay. Um, in fact, I, I, I have, unlike you, where you interview people, I have a podcast where sometimes I'll read sections from my book mm-hmm. or I will, um, I've done guided imagery. Yeah. Where somebody can just log on, it's free and you can, you can listen. Um, okay. And that's under Diane Grissel on Anchor or Spotify but you can listen to a guided imagery. But what you can also do is you start with progressive relaxation. 
So first of all, I'll work on taking in a good deep breath, you know, in through my mouth, you know, in through my yeah. nose and yeah. letting it out through my mouth. Right. I try to do my best Darth Vader imitation when I'm letting it out. Yes. Which a little bit of adding the vibration helps mm-hmm. you relax even more. Nice. But if you stop and just do a few of those. Mm-hmm. And then I'll imagine from, I work through my whole body. Okay. My scalp's relaxing. Yeah. And I imagine my scalp relaxing. Wow. And I imagine it coming down my forehead and into my eyes and cheeks and that my lips are relaxing and my lips are lightly parting because they're so relaxed. Right. Coming down into my neck and into my shoulders and your shoulders are just coming down. They're coming not as if they're still attached to your ears, you know, (laughs) (laughs) and I work through my whole body, just imagine it relaxing. And I keep imagining with each breath that the stress is going out my feet. Oh, nice. I like that. By the time I get to my feet, it's released. And I feel very light. Nice. I like and sometimes that. Sometimes I never make it past my shoulders. Oh, because really? Because I've like gone into this other state of mind. State. Yeah. Oh, I and like I that. Myself, this is just for 15 minutes when I start. And in 15 minutes, even if I haven't set a timer, I'm awake, but you can do it before sleeping too. I was just going to ask you that. That sounds like a great thing to do, especially if you have insomnia and you have trouble resting and you can't get, the mind is always, always going and you can't get it to stop. That sounds like an excellent way to just kind of get yourself to that medium where you could just be relaxed and actually Mm -hmm. get yourself into that mode where you could have a relaxed good night's sleep. Yeah. And I just keep saying, I'm breathing in relaxation and breathing out stress. Yeah. I you know, like that. Yeah. You just step into a bathroom stall. Yeah. For one minute. Right. One minute, and you just say, I'm breathing in relaxation. Out goes the stress. I mean, if you can't get, I don't, I don't think I've met the person that three breaths like that doesn't start to feel better. Yeah. You know, seconds can work a miracle. Oh, it definitely can. You know, it's funny you say that because I just wrote an article for Thrive Global and I, I'm a big fan of, of meditation and I talk about meditation. I'm like, even if you're in a public place and you don't have a place to go, even go to the bathroom and just, you know, I- you, like all you need is just a few moments of relaxation, breathing in, breathing in through the nose, out through the mouth and just letting go and just clearing your mind can do so much to an individual and get them into a totally different state of mind where their focus, their clarity is clear and the stress is out and they can, whatever's stressing them or whatever is getting them a little uptight, it'll be out. And then they just have to learn like to retrain the mind and think of how I could handle this in a better way. So it doesn't let me get, you know, whatever bothering you or upsetting you, you don't let it get to you. Exactly. That is excellent coaching. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and I say to people all the time, you know, our, our, I have a a 19 year old and a 22 year old. Yeah. And at different times when they were growing up, I would say, well, I'm going to leave the room. I'll be back. Right. Because I knew I had hit my maximum overload. Yes. Mm hmm. I remember when my daughter was three one time, I said to her, if you keep this up, what do you want me to do? Start yelling? (laughs) (laughs) And she put her hands on her hips at three or three and a half and said, mom, that would be ridiculous. (laughs) (laughs) And, you know. Yeah. true. I mean, it was, that's what it took to say, stop, take the time out, separate, go breathe and come back. Right. Exactly. Exactly. With everything as you know. Yeah. That's so true. I, and I remember the experience too. I used to laugh because my daughter had a very headstrong mind and she would be, you know, it was like, you could not win. She was just, it was like, and she, especially when it came to going to school, she had to dress a certain way. And it was, she had to pick the outfits out and I couldn't help her. And she would pick out these Cindy Lauper like outfits. Like, and I'm like, I can't send you to school looking like that. And she's like, I want to wear this, you know? And I got to the point, 
all right, you want to look like that? Fine. And I, I sent her to school with two different color earrings, two different color socks. I'm like, you know what? Go ahead. You know, <laughs> sometimes you just got to let go. You know, someone said something, they'll learn their lesson and they'll come back and they won't do it again. You know, so sometimes you just, you know, you just have to learn how to handle situations differently. You know, get out of that gray box and just do it some a way that you wouldn't normally do it, but actually it might benefit the situation. That is so funny. We <laughs> have similar daughters. <laughs> you know, my mother used to say, Diane, you have to pick and choose your battles. Exactly. So yes. They're only going to get bigger. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> bigger kids, bigger challenge. <laughs> yes, I agree. Yes. I, yeah. I became an empty nester this year. So I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Now you've written a book. Tell me about this book that you've written. Well, I've actually written 14 books. Oh, but, um, wow. You're like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, love, I love writing. Yeah, I, so do I. You know, my, I have a book called The Silver Disobedient Playbook, which is 365 Inspirations for Living and Loving Agencies. And that was actually... So many of my followers used to say to me, Diane, you know, I wish I could read you like on the beach and not get interrupted by the internet or yeah. texts or emails. So I took my first 365 blogs and put them into a book. That's which excellent. Was fun. I like that. Yes. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's been fun to have. Right. And then I wrote a book called Turbocharged, which was a health book. And I've written, I've, just written a lot of books, but just this weekend, I was saying to my husband, as much as I love writing books, I love writing a blog more. It's instant yeah, yeah. gratification. <laughs> yeah, it is. it is. It's actually instant gratification. And it's not, you know, as much as I love writing and I've written so many books, it can be draining yeah. too. You know, it's rewarding, but it's a lot of work that goes into it. People don't realize, you know, I laugh when I see little commercials or little ads, write a book in 30 minutes or write a book in a week. You know, I'm like, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> That's like the bait and click. You know, you go see a great headline and you think you're going to read a good article and then it has nothing to do with anything. And you say, why did I even spend the time clicking that link? <laughs> Yeah, you can't do it in a week. No. <laughs> and it was funny. I started this year saying, you know, I'm going to try to write a book like every two weeks, but mini books. I was going to yes. do mini, like, like a series. Yes, like 50 page books of different topics. That's because excellent. Sometimes I write a blog and I want to expand it. Yes. It's not really a full book either. Right. Well, I think I got to my fifth book and told my audience, well, I bit off more than I could chew. <laughs> I <think laughs> writing books. I never accounted quite the amount of, as you know, if you've written books, the editing time. Yes. You get all those thoughts on paper and it's like, wait a second, this thought is in chapter seven. It really belongs in chapter one. Yes. <laughs> I think that's when I used to get drained was the editing process. And I, exact same things used to happen to me as well. <laughs> yeah. I, I always tell first time writers, my, my first business book I had written, which helped my public relations firm stay in business for 30 years. Yeah. I had written it, but I had shown it to a friend who was a, is a writer and she was right. a ghost writer. And I was so proud of my book and I showed it to her and she sent it back to me. And I swear it looked like someone had died and she had mopped them up with my manuscript she <laughs> had to edit the whole thing. I don't think I talked to her for two weeks. I was <laughs> <laughs> And then I really had to tell people, just like I tell them now, I say, listen, there's writing and there's editing. Yes. Write your book and just get it all on paper. Right. Then go back and edit it. And if you're not a good editor, find one. Exactly. A hundred percent. Because people birth those books and they like think they're fantastic. Yeah. And, oh my God, they're incoherent. They need order. They need organization. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Two different and, properties. <laughs> and even, even well-known writers, I'll tell you, my first couple of books sucked because, you know, 
you you you're it's a it's a learning experience you know and it's like you get better and better as you go along and there's always more to learn like we were talking about in the beginning of the conversation you know you, you never stop learning and you learn from others and interacting and communication and you know so you know for even for authors they get better and better and better and their books get more enticing and more you know it's just it's it's everything in life is a learning process it's just a learning yep. process Stacy, you're you're so like into the process exactly. <laughs> you know, having written a blog now, I think I'm on my fifth year of writing every single day, posting a new blog on a new topic. And if I think about starting, yeah, and going through that first year, right. And now I'll be walking down the street, you know, the streets of New York, and someone will say something and be like. That's my blog topic. And then I'm writing the blog in my head. I do then that I too. Notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you do. You know, you're probably thinking, you know, that's just what my client needs a little coaching on, you know? That's yeah, exactly. Need. Exactly. <laughs> Someone will say something, even a phrase or a sentence. You're like, oh, that's great. You know, yeah. it's like so many of my audiences will benefit from that topic, you know? Yeah. As soon as you tune yourself into it, it's like the messages are coming in from everywhere. Yes, exactly. And that's all about connecting with yourself. When you connect with yourself and you connect with the universe and you listen to your heart, which listens to your, and it goes to the mind and you listen to your inner instincts, it all works together and things just start pouring in and you just go with the flow. Boy, we're coming full circle to where we started. Yes, we are. <laughs> So tell me, what's your latest project right now? Like what, what do you want our listeners to really know about that you really want them to really like focus on things that you're doing right now that you think are prevalent and really beneficial for them? Um, I would encourage anyone, if I was to rename my blog today, yes, it would not be silver disobedience. Mm -hmm. It would be called freetherapy.com. Right. <laughs> now I would never, you know, I would never name it that I wouldn't want the liability, um, <laughs> but I, you know, the conversation grows every day mm -hmm. and whereas it started with a, like a 50 and older crowd, then it started to be, you know, in the forties, yeah. then I would have people say to me, can I get permission to use your blog for my high school or college for a writing prompt. Right. And say, I'm honored, of course. Now I have kindergarten teachers say, right. I read your blog to my kindergarten class and we discussed it before that time. <laughs> 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 She's like, because I wanted to them to think as they were going to their naps, you know, about how they could be better with each other. Because right. We took the naps because we needed a timeout. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So funny. So I would love people to visit me and introduce themselves. You know, mm -hmm. hey, I heard about you via the Stacy's blog, you know, or it's podcast. Right. And um, because we're having a fun conversation. And I think, you know, one post at the time, one, it's such a detailed conversation that ensues after each post. Right. Where people write all these things that are just so heartwarming and they share stuff yeah and sometimes as you i'm sure find in these interviews you ask a question or you state something and someone responds from a perspective that you didn't even think of yeah you're writing and i'm like wow they really went deep in a different direction yeah yeah but it's cool yes it definitely is and it's amazing. You, you know, you get a, a bunch of people in the room. I was just in a seminar and everybody, they asked a question and, a, you know, each person had to write the answer down and every person in the room had the same answer, but it was written differently. But when it boiled down, it was really the same answer. It was just constructed differently in each other's minds. And it was so interesting because everybody's energy and everybody's ideas were on the same track but everybody just verbalized it differently on paper. And it was, it was, it was really amazing to see how each person takes, you know, can take a topic, but can write it so differently, 
but it, but when it boils down, it's really the same idea, but everybody has their own creativity and their own way. And just like readers or listeners, they might, you know, the answers might be the same, but they might like the style of somebody better just by the way they express themselves, you know, and that's how we learn from each other. Because then you look at someone else and say, wow, they really emphasized it really nicely. Or they, you know, I knew the answer to the question, but they really have a great way of breaking it down or expressing it and so forth. Yes, Stacy, And that, like one of the things when people will say, I feel like you're in my head. Right. I am a big believer in collective consciousness. Yes. In, in the way that I believe we all have the exact same emotions. Right. And we might feel them at different times, but everybody wants to, to quote Elvis Costello, peace, love, and understanding. Exactly. You know, we all, you know, life it's, it's the basic things we want. We want a yes. roof over our head. We want to know we, you know, our meals are taken, you know, that we can eat at night. 100%. A nice, peaceful bed we can get into. And the rest is noise and filler. But when we zoom in on those things, yes, people really connect in a yes. very intimate, heartwarming way. Yes. And people are very heartwarming. But you know yeah. what? If you ever notice, people hide in the woodwork. But when chaos comes... People come out from the woodwork and they all want to help each other. There's mm -hmm. love out there. There's peace out there. There's there's good-hearted individuals out there. And we shouldn't have to have tragedy or some type of, you know, something happen where these people come out in the woodwork. Why can't we do it 24-7? Why can't we be like that with each other? You know, why can't we train our brains to trust one another and not be so, not have the walls up all the time? You know, there are bad people in the world, yes, but I think there are a lot of good people too, you know? Exactly. And and that's what really comes out on a daily basis, you know, in the in the daily dialogue on the blog. It's just... It's fascinating that people just say, I so agree with all this. You yeah. know, this is, this is what I want to hear every day. Yeah. Like I said, you know, no politics, no, you know, we, you know, when people are coming together without that mega issue being yes. the cause, they, because Definitely. they just want to connect Definitely. and want to connect from a good place. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. Now, it is very cool, you know, and, and it's, you know, I, I love when I see people, you know, really, t you know, pull down the walls and then you get to see the real individual. Cause a lot of people, you know, put walls up to protect themselves. But once those walls are down, it, there's someone really amazing, outstanding, wonderful, you know, all those other great things lying behind that wall. Sometimes we just have to learn to trust and let those walls down. And it'd be amazing how many great connections you can make with each other, you know? And remember, and it goes back to the childhood. Whatever happened when you're, you know, within your lifetime, you know, it's the past. Don't let it, don't let it traumatize the rest of your life. And let those walls down. And when if you if you need to put those walls up, like you were saying, someone's in the elevator and all of a sudden your your inner instinct is saying, hey, that person, you know is not a, I don't feel good. You know, you let those walls, the things, but if you don't have that, then let the walls down and be free with one another to learn it from each other. Now, what, before I let you go, cause I know that you have things to do and I don't want to keep you here. We, I love having you here. You've been great, Diane. <laughs> Tell everybody <laughs> one more time about your blog, where they can find it. And that way everyone can go and see your wonderful blog and everything you have there. Thank you, Stacy. Well, my website is silverdisobedience.rocks because we all rock. We all do. So it's not dot com. It's silverdisobedience.rocks. And my Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, where you can find any of the blogs is just plain at Silver Disobedience. Awesome. Diane, it's been such a pleasure having you here. I hope you can come back and join us again when, when you have the time. I loved having you here and you had put such great input and great advice you've given these listeners. And thank you so much. I, I appreciate you coming on the show.
Well, Stacy, you're a rock star. It was really a pleasure. You're you're amazing, and this was just a fun conversation. I feel like I just had a coffee with a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thank you. So you know, thank you so much, and once again, thank you for coming on the show. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Same here. Thank you very much. Bye -bye. You're welcome. Bye bye.